Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the new height map terrain features in Icon 5.5. Uh, with the 5.5 patch there's a number of different uh, things you can adjust now to uh, so you have more freedom over, over changing uh, your, your height map terrain, uh, creating more details, replacing materials, all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, if you go into your set section in iClone here, in the, in the, uh, or set tab in the terrain section here rather, uh, you'll see a folder called height map large and that'll be your default uh, height map terrains that come with Icon 5.5. Um, so I'll just uh, double click on this one here, this butte here, and load that in. And if I hold the Alt and the Shift key down, and I zoom in and out, I can zoom in and out a lot faster, uh, which is useful for uh, large terrains like this. And you can notice that uh, the height map terrains are fairly large, larger than the grid even. Um, and if I zoom in on the mountainside here, you can see there's a quite a high level of detail. Um, the height map terrain, or sorry, the height map terrains take advantage of these uh, these maps here, as well as some material maps. Um, to create um, a, a simulated level of detail that you can achieve um, that actually replaces the high polygon uh, terrains, which are very high resource and don't really work in, uh, in real-time engines that well. So uh, if I zoom in here really close, you can see there's a nice, uh, nice grass terrain, the nice rock terrain, fairly detailed, uh, so it's uh, fairly decent, um, and that's all because of different maps that are being used. Uh, if I load in a different one here, for example, this canyon one here, you can see that uh, there's another uh, very interesting, uh, very nice looking map. Let's add in a prop here for this, uh, for this terrain here. If I go into my uh, prop section here, I'll just load in one of these uh, western saloons or what have you. And we'll load that in. And if I zoom in, I can press Control G to turn the grid on and off actually. And if I uh, zoom in really quickly on this, you can see that we get some nice, nice level of detail um, on this uh, saloon and the rocks in the background. So you can get some fairly decent looking scenes. Uh, height map terrains uh, look good uh, from far away as well as from close up. If I uh, hold the forward slash key down, you can see the uh, different uh, how the uh, terrain reflects all the light. Um, and if you pay close attention, you can actually see there's a lot of detail here as well that uh, the shadows are changing in the actual terrain if I move this light around. So height map terrains are fairly cool. Um, they're also very low poly as well. Uh, like I mentioned, if I go into uh, wireframe mode here, we can see the uh, the polygon count of our height map terrains. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, let's go to uh, over here by this mountain here. You can see it's a fairly uh, pretty low amount of polygons. But if you f if you feel that this is still uh, too high uh, for your computer, like if your uh, scene is really large or something like that, you can actually uh, go here on the uh, modify panel. If we go to the terrain section first, and you can adjust the uh, level of detail. So right now we're at performance, so it's uh, very low detail. If I raise that to quality. You can see that it increases the uh, polygon count as far as performance and quality. There you go. It's very high detail, very low detail there. So again, if your if your um, computer is kind of chugging behind, if uh, there's too many things going on in your scene, you can temporarily just decrease the level of detail um, to adjust uh, to make your computer a little bit faster. And it doesn't really do much in pixel shading mode. If I do the same thing, you can kind of tell a little, the edges are a little bit more, uh, a little bit less smooth. Um, and if you zoom in and out, uh, you can notice the difference as well. It's rendering based on the distance of the camera from the actual uh, actual terrain there. All right, so let's bring it back up to uh, high quality there. And also in the height map terrain, there's a there's of course the uh, height maps and the masking maps. So the height maps determine the uh, the level of height of different uh, areas of the terrain. So if I select that and I launch it up in Photoshop here, you can see that it's actually just a black and white map. And these uh, black and white areas here uh, correspond, the uh, white areas are, are very high mountainous areas, the black areas um, correspond with uh, ground level uh, within iClone. So you can see that's the height map right there. We'll go back into iClone. We also have the uh, mask map here. Now the mask map determines which textures are being applied at which areas on the, uh, on the terrain here. So you can, you can notice that the uh, terrain on the side of the mountain here is a lot different than the uh, terrain on the ground. And so the mask map actually determines where these are being applied. And you, you can adjust that as well. Um, well. I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial um, to create your own uh, mask maps. Uh, you can also adjust, now you can also adjust the height scale. Uh, so for example, we have these, uh, these mountains right here. If I wanted to make these mountains a little bit lower, I can adjust the height scale and bring those down a little bit, make it seem like more like an actual desert. Um, you maybe even back down to zero. So you can see the different textures being applied there. And uh, we can make those mountains grow. So that's a pretty cool new feature. As well as the height offset, if I turn on the grid control G, you can see the height offset will adjust uh, the level of uh, height for my uh, train. 
And you can see the uh, Y values of the, uh, of the texture on the mountains there changing as well to go along with the height offset. We'll just leave that back where it was around there. And then uh, you can also smooth out these mountains. So if I wanted to uh, bring these mountains up a little bit, you can see a little bit better. I can smooth those out and just kind of make them big uh, featureless mounds of, of dirt. Uh, normally you don't want to do that too much unless you have some really, um, really messy uh, terrain. But uh, it looks pretty good where it is like that. All right, so those are basically the, the three new features uh, with the height map terrain there um, that you can adjust. In addition to that, of course, you can adjust each material. So if I select my uh, diffuse map here, let's actually bring in a new, a new uh, terrain here. Let's bring in this uh, hill terrain here. Um, so you can see this terrain now is a very a lot, lot greener. Uh, we can see our, our little saloon is still there. You can uh, you raise that up so it's uh, not in the ground there. There we go. That looks good. All right, and uh, in addition, to, uh, we'll go back to the terrain section here. Now, in the terrain section, we have four different materials that you can see in this drop-down menu here. So you can see this one, uh, number two, is actually actually corresponds to this uh, stony um, side uh, face of the uh, mountain here. If I decrease the brightness, you can see exactly where that's taking effect. Um, I can also adjust the uh, hue and other things like that. If I want it to be a little bit green or moldy looking or mossy looking, I can adjust the hue as well. And, of course, there's a third one right here. Um, this, this is a different area. So if I wanted to have, like, for example, a little bit of snow on the top of my uh, terrain, I can do that as well with the brightness. And also you can adjust, you can just simply uh, replace the diffuse map as well. So if I just uh, double click on the diffuse map, and I just maybe bring in some snow, snow texture, you can see the effect that that will have. Similar to uh, uh, raising the brightness, we can just simply just replace maps one by one, and it has the same bump map. Um, and of course, you can, you can tile these maps as well. If, uh, if I wanted to have uh, more detail, uh, I can tile them. Uh, let's see what happens if I uh, select map four here. Let's take off the grid for a second here. So map four, if I uh, increase or decrease the brightness, you can see right there where map four is being applied. So let's focus in on one of those areas here. And uh, let's tile it a little bit more. So map four is like the uh, kind of rocky surface there. If we just put this uh, as one for the tiling, you can see the effect that that has. Uh, it just basically creates uh, makes the texture a lot larger. Let's bring it back down to about 50. And there you can see that uh, in the X and the Y, the effect that that's having. So make sure that your tiling is correct. If, you're, if your texture ever looks a little bit uh, off or a little bit blurry, uh, you can always adjust the tiling um, and uh, fix that up as well. Um, in addition to that, you can simply load uh, different materials as well. Um, so if I'm on uh, this uh, height map one here, for example, let's go back to this one here, and I want to load a material, I can maybe just load, uh, let's load a default icon material here. Maybe want to load like a uh, sand material here. And you can see the effect that that will have. Uh, it looks a little bit more deserty, but of course we probably want to tile this a bit more than it is. It looks a little bit strange. So let's try a tile of about 40. And uh, you can see the effect that that has right away. Um, you won't be able to notice right away because actually the bump map as well needs to be tiled. So this is actually just the bump map. Um, so I'll go over to the bump map here and I'll just add to 40 as well. And now you can see that that's uh, changing according to more to what we want. Now it looks a bit more sandy. So we have a strange combination of uh, sand and snow and rock. Uh, very interesting terrain. Um, if I wanted to, I can maybe uh, bring the sand and replace it with uh, ice as well. Let's replace that with ice. It looks a little bit more, a little bit better now. Looks more like an Icelandic uh, landscape. Um, the rock should be good. We'll keep the snow as well. This one, maybe we can change it to like a, whoops, let's uh, actually just replace the diffuse map here. We'll replace this with like a nice snowy. There we go, that looks a bit better. So you go, you can simply replace all the, uh, there's a saloon in the middle of the, <laughs> in the middle of the frozen tundra here. Um, but you can simply replace all the uh, diffuse maps. Um, the bump maps as well can be adjusted to create different effects. Um, you, you saw the bump map uh, tiling in effect before. Um, and of course, you can uh, actually just drag in materials as well if I wanted to replace an entire material. Say, for example, the snow. If I go into the materials folder here, just load that up. I wanted to replace the, the snow with, like, a, let's say, a. Uh, oh. Let's go to a. Uh, let's bring in the uh, rock here. This uh, rock, rock hard winter here. So I can simply just drag that in from my Explorer folder as well. And you can see the effect that that will have right away. Um, so of course that needs to be tiled again. I always use about 40 seems to be the magic number for a lot of uh, 
a lot of textures there and of course the bump map as well there you go all right so you can do a number of co different cool things with your uh, with your height map terrains uh, in icon 5.5 uh, the modifications are endless. There's a number of, diff number of different combinations you can use um, depending on the uh, effect you're going for. If you want a frozen tundra or a sandy desert. All right, so that's about it for the uh, introduction to the new uh, height map terrain features in Icon 5.5. We have some other tutorials that will teach you how to create your own height map as well and uh, how to make that uh, put that into a beautiful scene as well. So stay tuned for those.